start with the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful. Dear students of Classics, Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuhu. Welcome you in Pakistan International School, Taif's Virtual Learning System. How are you students? How are you? How is going everything? Hope you all are well and uh, working hard with your studies. And uh, definitely I'm also getting your results of your test. So you all are working hard, mashallah. Best of luck, good luck, and keep it up. So let's start our le today's lecture. Dear students, today we have English lecture number 41. This is grade six. And what we are going to learn today, this is a novel around the world in 80 days. And we are going to learn the chapter number 19 of the novel around the world in 80 days. And the name of the chapter is the passengers take the plunge. So now dear students, uh, uh, we have the topic and here's your teacher, Sir Faraz Nadeem. And today it means that we have a novel around the world in 80 days. So dear students, we have the passenger take the plunge. The word plunge means dear students, a person who just take a dive into the water or just uh, thirst in the water. So some it means the passengers were about to uh, roll in the water. So let's start the lecture, but I wanted to add over here that the previous lecture, English lecture number 40, we completed the uh, lesson number 25 about uh, English, guided English book. And as you are well aware that the uh, new brighter grammar book, English uh, grammar book lessons or uh, chapters have been completed. And so now the left thing is that all in guided English lessons and novel lessons. So today uh, we have novel lesson and the last lecture was about the uh, previous, the care of animals. So we completed that. And now we are going to start the novel around the world in 80 days, chapter number 19. The passengers take the plunge. So let's start. Dear students, we are here on chapter number 19 and uh, the passengers take the plunge. The train had reached the northwest border of the Great Salt Lake and had completed 900 miles from San Francisco while Passport House was growing more and more impatient. Auda was experiencing fears due to an entirely different reason. Several passengers had got off and got on at the Green River station. Among them, Auda had recognized Colonel Stamp Proctor. Her heart sank when she realized that this was the man who had insulted Mr. Fogg at the San Francisco's meeting and Mr. Fogg had pledged to call him to account for his for his behavior. Auda seized a moment when Mr. Fogg was asleep and told Fix and passed out whom she had seen. They tried to rest, reassure her that they would deal with him. Now, dear students, here it is told that the train had reached the northwest border of the Great Salt Lake and the train had completed 900 miles from San Francisco and Passport Out was growing more and more impatient to reach and Auda was experiencing fears due to an entirely different reason as well. And several passengers just got off and got on at the Green River Station because the Green River Station was just completed and they were just few got off and got on. So uh, here, the uh, who saw Auda uh, uh, had recognized Colonel Stamp Proctor and her had insulted Mr. Fogg. Who was he, Mr. Fogg, at the San Francisco's meeting and Mr. Fogg had pleased to call him to account for his behavior. Fix thought of a trick and waited till Mr. Fogg awoke. After a few moments, Fix said, these are long and slow hours. 
that we are passing on the railway. But they pass, said Mr. Fo. You were in the habit of playing whist. Now, dear student, what is the whist? Whist is a game. Uh, the four people just play that game. And it is even called a game of cards as well. Yes, but it would be difficult here. I have neither cards nor partners. Oh, we can easily buy some cards for they are sold on all American trends. Is for partners if Madam plays. Now here, dear students, uh, the fix said that these are long and slow hours and that we are passing on the railway. Uh, so the Mr. Folk said, yes, they will fast. You were in the habit of playing whist. Yes, but it would be difficult here. I have neither cars nor partners. So they decided to uh, buy the, some cars and they are easily available on American press and partners we will call Madam to play with us. Certainly, sir, said Auda quickly. I admit I do play the game, said Fix. As you please, sir, said Mr. Fleece Fogg. Glad to resume whist. Passport had resumed the students to start. They started the game to play. Passport out was sent to buy two pack of cards and some pins and counters. The game began. Now, thought Passport out, we have got him. He won't budge. Now, dear students, here the word is budge. Uh, the meaning of this word is uh, to move. By half past 12 in the morning, the train had crossed the Rocky Mountains. Soon it was lunchtime. After comfortable lunch, Mr. Fogg and his partners had just resumed playing when violent whistling was heard. Now, here, dear, so violent means a kind of... Uh, fearing whistling, a uh, loud whistling, which was uh, not habitual, and it was uh, un in, uh, unhabited, or uh, some kind of strange, in other words. And the train stopped. Because of that violent whistling, the train stopped. Passport out rushed out of the carriage. 30 or 40 passengers had left the carriage. Among them was Colonel Stem Proctor. Now, the, dear students, the in emergency, the train is stopped. People means 30 to 40 people just came from their mm -hmm. carriage. And among them was a Colonel Stem Proctor and also passport out, rushed out. And because of that, let's see what happening, where the train is stopped, what was the violent, why was the violent whistling over there? That's why. The train had stopped before a red signal, which blocked the way. The engineer and conductor were talking to a signal man, the station master of medicine bow, the next stop. Now, dear students, when the train stopped, it was a red signal and that blocked the way. The engineer and the conductor of the train both came out and they were talking to the signal man who was the station master of medicine bow, the next stop was there. Means after that, there was a medicine bow, the next stop was there. And they were talking with signal men. Passport out gathered around other passengers and heard the signal men saying, now you can't pass. The bridge at Madison Bow is shaky and would not bear the wet of the train. The signal man was talking about the suspension bridge about a mile from the place where they now were. The bridge was in a dilapidated, not dilapidated condition and it was impossible to risk the passage. Now, dear students here, when the passport out heard that the signal man was saying that the, why the train is stopped over here, because after a mile from there, there is a bridge at Madison Bow, and that bridge is shaky and would not bear the weight of the train. And also the signal man said that, that that suspension bridge about a mile from the place where they are. So the bridge was in a dilapidated condition. There, students, the word dilapidated, dilapidated means uh, uh, a poor condition or such a condition which need badly repair. So uh, it, it was said by the signal men that the bridge is very poor. It is not in a proper condition. So the train cannot cross it. If it will cross, then definitely it will
fell on. So it, that's why it, they stopped the train in emergency. Mm, cried Colonel Proctor. But how can we stay here amidst the snow? Amidst dear student means among the snow, means it was snowing over there. So he said, how can we uh, stay over here? We have asked for a train, but it is unlikely to reach medicine. Pow in less than six hours, replied the conductor. Now the conductor said that the, we call the trainer, the train will come and it will just stop uh, before the bridge. So how we will just move from here to that one mile, how we will do? And how much time, then six hours, cried Pasquitar. Besides, it will take us as long as that to reach Medicine Bow on foot, said the conductor. Now they said it will take six hours because we have to move by foot towards the where uh, to reach Medicine Bow on foot. But it is only a mile from here, said one of the passengers. Passenger says that why it will take six hours? Because it is one mile only. Yes, but it is on the other side of the river, said the conductor. Conductor said, yes, it is one mile, but it is on other side of the river. So you have to cross the river, in other words. And we can't cross it in a boat, asked the colonel. That's impossible. The creek is swollen with the rains and you shall have to make a 10 mile detour to the north to find a crossing place. He said that, that it's difficult for you people to cross in a boat because the creek, creek is just kind of a, a place which is full with the rain. Uh, so it's swollen with the uh, means area which is full with the water. So, and you cannot uh, you have to make a 10 mile detour means and detour means dear students another way to take a different route at this the colonel launched a volley of oaths denouncing the railway company and the conductor the other passengers too joined the colonel hospital thought that he could not avoid telling his master what had occurred he turned to go towards the carriage when an engineer foster called out Perhaps there is a way, after all, to go over. Now, dear students, at this time, the colonel becomes aggressive and other people were also joined the colonel because they say how it is for us to cross the river, how it is for us difficult to stay over here in the snow and we cannot, the train cannot move on the bridge. What, what is the solution over this? But here, hospitals listen that person said means engineer said there is a one solution one way and that is what hospital stopped short and listened to the engineer means they stopped and they say no let's see what the engineer is giving the solution what is the only way to go over if we run the train on full steam we might cross the bridge said the engineer engineer said that yes there is a one way to come over that if we run the train on full steam means full speed so then we we are able to cross we can be we might cross the bridge passport did not like the idea and it seemed dangerous to him but the other passengers liked the engineer's proposal now this proposal was not liked by the passport because it's kind of dangerous but the rest of the passengers liked it the passengers resumed their seats in the train Pospita took his seat beside Fleece Folk without telling him what had happened. Now, Fleece Folk uh, was not aware about this whole situation and Pospita just sat over there with him. The whistle blew vigorously. Now, whistle has started. The engineer reversed the train for nearly a mile. Now, they reverse means they went back a mile, the train, and moved so rapidly that uh, prolonged scratch came from the locomotive. Now, dear students, here there is that when they went back one mile, that dear students, here is that, that a prolonged screech came from the locomotive. Means, dear students, the train prolonged means a very full speed and screech means an annoying sound just came from the train uh, road or from the train. The train rushed ahead at a speed of 100 miles an hour and went over the bridge like a flash. 
Now, dear students, the train, the speed of train was 100 miles per hour and it just rained from the bridge like a flash. Train leaped from one bank to the other. The engineer could not stop the train until it had gone five miles beyond the station. Because it was so high speed, the engineer couldn't stop it. It went five miles away. It stopped five miles, miles away from the station. When the train had crossed the river, the bridge collapsed and fell into the rapids of Medicine Bow. So it becomes fallen, dear student, the bridge after the train when crossed. So dear students, this was the lesson. Now we have the questions and exercises of chapter number 19. The passengers take the plunge. We have answered the following questions. We have three questions, dear students, over here. The how did the Auda prevent the conflict between Mr. Fogg and the Colonel Proctor? This uh, question is uh, your homework. Number two, why did the train stop before the red signal? And number three, how did the train cross the bridge? So, dear students, here the question number one is giving you as a homework to you, and two and three questions answers are given over here. Have, have a look. Number one, uh, here, dear students, we have question answers. And number one, how did Auda prevent the conflict between Mr. Fogg and Colin and Proctor? This is your homework. Number two, why did the train stop before the red signal? The answer is the train stopped the red signal due to the blocked way. And because the uh, bridge was weak, it was difficult uh, to uh, cross the train from that bridge because it was in a poor condition. Number three, how did the train cross the bridge? The train crossed the bridge with at a speed of 100 miles per hour and went over the bridge like a flash. So, uh, dear students, uh, these are the two, uh, three total questions given over here. The question number one is your homework. Read the passage. Read this chapter again and again. Find out the answer and send it to me at my WhatsApp and let me check your answer. But two answers, number two and three, are given over here. Now this is uh, exercise number three, dear students. Who speaks uh, these words and to whom, why and when? So these uh, three, uh, exercise number three is given over here. Number one is I admit I do play the game. Now who said these words are whom these words were said. So definitely it's quite easy, dear students, to say about these. I admit I do play the game. These words said by the fix. Okay. And to the out. Number two, if we run the train on full steam, we might cross the bridge. Now these words were said by the engineer. Yes. To the uh, people who were standing over there might be. So these said the engineer that there is a one way to cross the bridge and that is if we run the train on full steam, full speed, we might cross the bridge. Number three, the bridge at Madison Bow is shaky and would not bear the weight of train. Who said these words that the bridge is shaky and would not bear the weight? These words were said by the signal man said to the engineer and conductor on the spot when the train is stopped and they asked him that why the train is stopped over here and he told them that the bridge at medicine bow is shaky and would not bear the weight of the train now dear students the next lecture what will be the next lecture it will be lesson number 27 first aid inshallah from the guided english introductory book and your homework is about today's dear students. It is question number one. How did Auda prevent the conflict between Mr. Fogg and Colonel Proctor? And also, exercise number two, match the following words in list A with their antonyms in list B. Usually, I solved this exercise for you people, but today I uh, uh, thought that why not this exercise should be given to you dear students to find out to work uh, to open dictionary or something else then you will do this now what is what you have to do over here 
Now match the following words. Now there are in two lists, list A and list B. But they are the anti words, opposite words. Now resume. Now resume is the word given over here. And first of all, you must know the what is the meaning of the resume. And definitely then you will be able to get the what is the opposite anti meaning of the resume. Understand or not? And then secondly, violent and dilapidated, risk, prolonged, vigorous, suspension. So these words are given over here in list A. And these words are an opposite words. Now what you have to do, you have to just, yes, match them. Yes, match them. That which word is with that. So this is now first, for example, I will just give you example of this resume. Now resume means to start, continue. The what is the opposite word of this resume? I will just help you that this is the resume and this word is given discontinue. Look over here. Discontinue. So this is uh, continue. The resume means continue and uh, uh, the opposite meaning, the anti meaning of the the word resume is discontinued. So same you have to find what is the opposite meaning of violent, risk, prolonged, vigorous, like the suspension. So I think this is quite easy for you to do this and do this like and take this kind of a screenshot or a picture and then send to me uh, in WhatsApp and I, def I will check and I will let you know that the all are correct and few are correct. But hope you are quite intelligent and you will do all correct answers. Okay, dear students, this is all about today's lecture. I want to repeat today we learned the chapter number 19. Uh, the passengers take the plunge about the novel around the world in 80 days. And you are as well aware that randomly we are just selecting the chapters. So today we got the 19 chapters and uh, we, I tried my level best to tell you the words meaning as well and exercise are done. We have three exercises, one, two, three. Exercise number one is about the question answers. So three questions are given. We have to write the answers. Two questions answers are written by me. One is given to you as a homework. And exercise two is also giving you homework to write the antonyms of the words and match them. And exercise three is done by me. So this is your homework and thank you for joining dear students. I uh, hope so you understood. If you have any query, any problem, you can just come after this lecture at a Zoom meeting. I will be available over there. And if you have any query, you can ask. Till then, dear students, Allah Hafiz and goodbye.